this, <laughs> this is the Levels Podcast. I am your host, Justin Moro, joined as always by my co-host, the Triple OG, Willie Mason. What's going on, Oz? You good? We've got no one in the middle, OG. TNT has been demoted to the button pusher behind the screen at the moment. Already. Jokes aside, but we can't wait to have TNT back here next week. Actually, TNT will be away next week, kicking off Monday's review of round two. Special guest. But we have a special guest coming in. Don't say it. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it for next week. We'll save it for next week. But before we get into the round two preview, make sure you please subscribe to the channel. Uh, The response has been unreal. Comments, all grouse. Everyone's loving us. the subscriptions are flying. We're having a great time. The views, all the hits on our channel, the Levels podcast, the Levels network on Instagram, TikTok, they're all flying. Thank you for everyone that has been rolling with us up to date. Welcome to anyone new. So if you are new, make sure you get on the platforms. If you listen to us on Apple, Spotify, it's all in the link in our bio, Levels network. It is on Instagram, it's on TikTok. Here's with those five stars, OG. Yeah, let us, like, let us you know got to, got to. Let us know to. you're about that five-star life. Don't be a hater and just give us one. Come on. Yeah. Before we move on to the show as well, get into the topics, OG, just want to thank our partners, The Tab. Um, they're with us all year. We're stoked to have them on the board. Because what, what, Mace? They're the proper OGs they are. They of are the, the gambling OGs. world. They're the triple Look OGs of the gambling world. We've got something exciting coming up with Bet's Friends. Add that just before we get into the teams. I'll tell you, I've got some uh, pretty cool things planned with, with them. We're loving all the interaction that we've been getting. Everyone who's been following us in the Bets Friend app as well, OG. Some OG stuff. Been... We've got some good stuff with the tab, man, yeah. this year. Yeah, we've got some big plans. Ain't just so... footy. It's not just footy. Not just we're, NRL. We're excited. Could be around. Yeah, yeah, we've got some stuff coming up. But without further ado, you ready to get in the show, OG? Let's go. Let's roll. All right. First story. Latrell Mitt is about that life. Chestnut checkers. He's getting into it. He's playing the media game. So Latrell's attempt to stir up the Panthers before they play against his bunnies have resulted in Penrith responding. Ivan Cleary fired back in a presser, effectively saying he thought the comments were off the mark. At the moment, really, really just focusing on getting our game right and going after the game and seeing it as a great opportunity to get our season going. OG, question is, do you like this from Trell Mitt? He's a... Uh, yeah, well, he's put himself out there. I like it, man, because he's yeah. got to back it up. Yeah. He's that man out there. When he, They go as far as Latrell Mitchell goes. You know, so if he's going to go out there, he's going to put himself on front street, he's going to say some shit to stir up everyone, he's going to back his own ability, man. So I think he's, I think South Sydney are keen for like a bit of redemption. I said the other night, man, if Penrith wasn't as dominant as they were in the last three years, I think South probably jags a premiership. You know, so they've been the, they've been that little thorn out of all the in teams. Their fucking foot, and it's just been annoying. And I know the Cody Walkers and Latrells have kept receipts from the last couple of years. The amount of chirping that Luai has been doing, and the, just the swag that Penrith had. They enjoy their tries. They enjoy everything. They enjoy beating the shit out of you, bashing in all the odors of Fisher Harris's. They've all got that sort of you know, it's it's confidence. It's not arrogance. That's what happens when you, you, you don't lose and you build that fucking great club mentality and they're all brothers out there. And South have built that to a degree as well. Yeah, 100%. They just haven't got the rings to show it. Well, there's one team that's been in front of them, OG, and it's the Panthers. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. You know, if there's I'm one like, team's kept receipts, like you said, it's going to be it's South. It's going to be South, and man. It's going to be Troll Mitt. Yes. And if, if they're able to get over top of them, Troll's going to let them know. And, if you and think, so is Cody. You're right. You Cody's going to let them know. Two people... Look at Latrell Mitt. Everyone's going to say, when Leota hit him last year, that changed the game. Do you know what mm, I mean? Yeah, when, yeah for when sure. When Leota, about 15 minutes in, bang, you didn't see much of Latrell after that game, after that after that hit. Was, I've never seen Latrell get hit like that. I told, I said last year. Moses Leota. Moses yeah. Leota hit him like a fucking truck. Yeah. And I think he's been waiting all this time to get his redemption back. Yeah, because there's a little period just and before then, halftime. Yeah. Where it was, they were in control that game. They Not were, in control, mate. but they were travelling. They were. And then within the space of a probably about four to five minutes just before halftime. Yeah. A couple of passes that he would love to have back for sure. Yeah, and the Cody So he Walker, wants this one bad. Cody man. Walker, Luai Cleary? He wants this hey, one bad. Cody Walker's talent is world. He's got fucking ridiculous talent. Not in the Origin team, you know. Luai's got that spot. You know, he could play seven. Cleary's got that spot. And they chirp. You know what I mean? Like So, like... You know, like, Cody would have been good in our in our in my era because yeah. he just easily just he'd be. Oh, if I've said to Cody, 
If, he's, if he was my 5'8", because I know how fire he is, get that shit over and done within the first five minutes, let's play football. Yeah. Because he just wants to punch someone in the head. Yeah. Get that all over, because now it's just an accumulation of them chirping, 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 cheap shots, this and that, where Cody's about it. He wants it. He wants mm. that smoke. Bang. And then he does something silly, like a high shot. And then they get a penalty. It's a momentum swing. You get under Cody Walker's skin, that, you know, a lot of teams are looking at that going, if you hit Latrell, you get under Cody Walker's skin, you rattle South and you win. So that's the blue. That's but, the blueprint. But now Trell Mitts trying to change narrative. Oh, no, now I he's know, getting on I the know. front foot early doors. He's trying to plant a seed within them. Obviously, the what Penrith, did he say? What was he say? The Penrith say? Panthers will say he's, he's basically said that they're there for the taking. Basically, this is me. Uh, what's the word? Not summarizing it. Um, paraphrasing. Word, paraphrasing. Right. I'll paraphrase Trell Mitts because I know a little bit of Trell Mitts yeah, as well. Yeah. I played. I played. Don't nine, quote. Don't quote. I've, pl- I've played 18 holes with Trell yeah. I know. I know his mindset. I know what he's thinking. I know the way he chirps when we play golf. So I've got. A, I've got a fair idea of the way he's chirping right now. And uh, to add to sort of the story we spoke about on the review as well, AG Penrith Panthers come out and tweeted a picture of Jamin Salmon getting choked out by a drone, just having a bit of a giggle. It's, to me. That's like, there's a little bit in there. There's mm. a little bit like, oh, come on. Like, we're, you know, you don't, we don't need to see that. We know you're all sweet. People mess like, the messages after that video, everyone's like, man, Jerome and, and uh, Salmon are sweet. Of course we knew they're sweet. That's not the problem. The, pro- the problem was never, are the boys going to get on with it straight after the game? It's just don't give media, don't give podcasts like ourselves a chance to speak on what but, your hey, behavior is like exactly. after a game. And, and why? You did it on the field. That was our main point. That's it. The That's point it. was... We knew the boys were going to be you sweet. You can say whatever the fuck you want, but as long as nobody is hearing it, not on the field, they're too proud a bunch of blokes, you know what I mean? They've built that culture out there. They're very tight. And letting that, letting that slip, mm. just let the whole media just have a crack at them. And they're smart. They should be smarter than that. I actually thought it was a sign that they're closer than what people think. So the arguments, the biggest arguments I had with people that I was closest, we've said it before on the show. So my problem was never... Like with this tweet, it's like, I knew Salmon and Jerome are going to be boys. It's fucking, never mm. questioned that once. I'm just like, man, you just like, like you said, the respecting as well from Salmon, take it inside, have the, have the chat in the sheds. And then if it needs to be had again in video, then have it in video. Like at the time it was, yeah. all, and for people that sort of message us, you know, whether it's in the comments or, you know, on the clip, we knew they're going to be sweet. So relax with that. Um, I like what Charles Mitt's doing. It's a big game. Uh, well, I like I what think he's he doing. senses. I think he senses there's a bit of blood in the water. Oh, mate. With the Panthers it's, for sure, just it, like everyone else. It is. But like, I, I just like the fact that, like, Cheryl Mitt's saying some shit. Now he's got to back it up. And he's okay. all about that. And, like, and that's pretty scary for Penrith. Mm. But then Penrith, on the other hand, that's, they've been the team for three or four years. Yeah, they're, they're dogs. Still, do they still have it? Yeah, they're dogs. It's, it's questionable now because they hey. look human. This they is look the, human. This is the perfect time this to prove is it. The, yeah, and if they come out and they spank South, that's another mental little blow for South, isn't it? And for Trell Mitt and for everyone else. Like, it's just like, fuck, we're here. Yeah. Don't judge us on last week. Yeah. If there's ever a time to beat Penrith now, the feeling human, you're getting on the front foot, you're talking it up. Yeah. Oi, big South game. better win. This is a big South game. South better win. Oi, South better win. Because <laughs> your boy Trell is talking that smack. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, hey, Penrith, Penrith are about that, mate. Yeah. And hey, you got you got two middles out. You got Totola out. You got yep. um, Jai Arrow out. Yeah. You haven't got full strength. Come mm. on. Chestnut checkers, baby. Come with it. I know, oh, I'm come playing, with it. Troll mid, I'm playing the game with you. you better come I'm playing with, with it. the game with you. I'll tell you who does come with it. Our next guy. Putty t- Paddy Tough Carrigan. And he just he was just with it against the Panthers as well. Six clubs. Uh, after Paddy Dirty Carrigan. Is, is that, that Eugene Team that chucked that in there? He's giving me the thumbs up. Hardly a surprise. So is he, is he off contract? I think it would be maybe 2024, but it's just like people that are coming after him now with the intent of maybe reaching out to... I'd imagine this is what would be going on. People reaching out now, trying to get a gauge on where he's at. But I guess it's just added pressure for Broncos to get it done as well. The lists include Canberra, Melbourne, and two unnamed Sydney clubs. Doesn't matter who the club is, he would make that team better 100%. Yeah. Paddy Carrigan. I agree. He's, he's become, he's like that performance on the weekend. I think, yeah, we spoke a little bit about it. He's, a, he's an elite middle in the game. Even now. Payne Haas went. They, yeah. they, they go good. Whenever they, they'll go as far as those two take him. You know, they're the leaders within the team. I mean, Payne Haas would have been a part of that World Cup um, victory. Paddy Carrigan. Paddy was coming off the bench. He got that bench spot? Yeah, because Yoey started. So yeah. Yoey started. So um, he, he took that purse on the weekend against Yo. 
I like yeah, that. I thought he did. Like he, yeah. went, he went at him. Well, we he went talked at about the matchup, the 13s, the, the battle of the 13s. They probably carry him, probably got it. Obviously, yeah, for sure. You know, they got the win. Obviously, yeah, they got the you win. Know, the Bronx won, but I think he played better than Yo. Yeah. Yeah, is Yo great. is a bit off too without Uppy. So yeah. So that definitely played off. a part. You called that in the preview actually last week, mm. talking about what that combination would look like without yeah. um, Uppy linking up with Yoey and therefore how it looked like with Nath. But um, you well, can't, he, surely Broncos can't let Paddy go. You wouldn't get There's it. There's no way he gets on the you market. You wouldn't even, anywhere, even near next year, let him off. You know what I mean? You're signing him this year. I'd be if this if these reports are coming out and I'm hearing about and his management are trying to use it as uh, tactics. I'd be sure. whatever they Broncos are. Who, so it's probably Benny Eichen still involved. Yeah. You call on the manager. What like what's the price? Get it done. Like yeah. as long as it's fucking not ridiculous. Like so. What do you reckon? Well, Paddy's probably worth. I reckon he's he's probably close to a mil. He'd be close to a mil. It, the, well, if, it, if the 13 in this day and age and he's one of them who is a legit link 70 plus minutes a game he's 80 a, if you want he's a legit link to the middles the sevens the spines not, yeah the, everyone Young. basically links up with the back rollers he drops Jordan Ricky under he drops Capewell under he drops Payne Haas under he sets up plays so Ren can just get to to the light, like to the end of the sets um, needs good props but he needs good props he does so he's lost one Flegler you know, you got a couple coming off contracts, so like, well, it makes it even more. You wanna, yeah, you want to tie, you want to tie him up, and just say, if I was another, if I was a prop up there, I would want Carrigan to sign. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm with you. So you know, if you if you if you're a young prop playing, or if you're a prop now, you want a lock who plays big minutes. Yeah, can ball play, unselfish. Nice little tip on. Right, on yeah, exactly. Move the ruck around. Do all the things that Paddy Carrigan does. That's what I want from my lock. You know, so if you're a prop and, and just say if you just say Carrigan signs a four year deal somewhere else in the next like, you know, I don't know, twelve months. Imagine Patty in Melbourne. Yeah, I'm just saying, oi, they got some money, Melbourne. Do you know what That'd I mean? So like over. so things like that could happen. And That'd then you like so, so if you're a young prop, if you're a prop there now, you're like, fuck it. I'm like, oh, I don't see the next Patty Carrigan here. Mm. But I don't think that'll happen. I think Paddy will probably see this big contract out and then he can go on the open market again when he's like twenty six or twenty seven. Yeah. Yeah, but he's a solid. Like he'd be he'd be your number one priority. Him and Payne Haas are coming off. If he become off, available, I think him he's and Payne Haas are coming off contract at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So so maybe one of the. All right. Other. So what devil's advocate here? Who do you, who do you pick? Ooh. Who are you picking right now? They, I think they're coming off well, contract TNT at the same put, time. TNT has put the name Paddy Dirty Carrigan in here, as in yeah. tough carry. But he's got me. I feel dirty even having to pick one of them. All right. You're probably going to have to. Gun to my head. Probably going to have to. Gun to my head. Oh, yeah, I know you're, you're going to say it, aren't you? I was going to say, yeah. I think I'm Paddy, bro. I think I'm Paddy. And I, do, and, and I feel disgusting saying it. You should feel disgusted. Because I love pain, bro. I think but in this day and age, with the, um, the difference between the, the best 13s and, and mm -hmm. the effect, like the effect that he had when he didn't play in the last four or five games... Oh man, and I feel, that's and that's I feel dirty. Pain, I feel that's dirty. without a pain house as well. Shout that's, out to pain, bro. With, that's if you're the, watching that's, this, I love you, bro. And that's with an injured pain house. Yes. So just say, and I think Carrigan's games evolved a little bit more because the 13 needs to really evolve, uh, evolve with the ball skills, ball playing wise. Where Payne Haas hasn't really been coached that well. Mm. He doesn't really. He doesn't have to tip on. He doesn't play second phase. Oh, he doesn't, they're, they're he doesn't go out the back. Better. But I'm just saying, yeah. Paddy has got Payne Haas. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he needs Payne Haas. Payne Haas don't need anyone. That's true. But if he develops a pass... Right. If you think about plug and play... You know what I mean? You like, can play Payne with any 13. You play Payne Haas. Payne Haas is the best prop in the world. How does... So, like, but for I'm just example, saying, so, who, so just saying, like, he had, so just say if you coach that kid yeah. and if you, get a, if, you, if you develop a pass, if you de develop a... He doesn't really have to offload. Yeah. He goes out the back, he hits out the front, footwork. He doesn't really have to do that. If you go that, he evolves as a player. Mm. I think Paddy Carrigan has evolved already. Mm. I don't think he can he's go. Much, I don't think he can go much further because yeah, his ball playing is right. quite skill good. Sets yeah, his up skill there. set is already up there. You yep. give that to Payne Haas, which he can develop. You're talking about one of the greatest forwards of all time. Mm. Yeah, That's what I think. So you I'm got, like, you got Payne? upside. You're looking at Payne Haas. He's, he's a generational yeah. talent. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a tough one, man. I like I said, I felt dirty saying it, but and he doesn't have a man I, bun. I think it's. <laughs> I love that shit, though. <laughs> that gives me Euroscope vibes. I love that, Patty. That's why I think I leaned towards him because I was like, man, I had that hair back did, in the day. But the, the hair bun... He did. makes it look way cooler than what I did, though. And I was playing for... I Nike. remember. <laughs> I remember you had it going. I had a little bit at the back oh, end of Catalan. I knew that's why you were sticking up for him. Yeah, I know. It's, it's the fucking it's the man, man bun. bun. 
Gutherson uh, man bun. Come yeah, on, what's your take on yeah, that shit? Yeah, I'm the shit? OG. I'm the OG. Come on, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just because you rocked it. I rocked it. Because you, you rocked, rocked, rocked it. Because you rocked it. That's why you got a soft <laughs> yeah, fucking spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you're keeping it clean, just yeah. like paying. Paying keeps it nice and clean. <laughs> Shout out to the Barber Brothers too. Look after paying yeah, and the man. boys. Uh, but let's move it on to a guy that has just committed. He's done. Three-year deal after all the speculation. David Fafida staying on the Gold Coast Titans. I'm excited. New, I'm ex, it's exciting news for myself and my family to stay here on the coast for a couple more years. I'm enjoying my time here and can't wait to share the field with the boys. Holbrook also said, I'm excited to have David's... Dis, dis, I'm excited David's decided he wants to be a Titan long term. Tell what he said. Okay. I'm excited to work with him as well to bring the success to our region over the next few years. So there was a lot of speculation. Like I said, OG, they got the job done. David stays there. How much was it? Would you say would it, it would have been done a couple of weeks ago, or does does the last couple of you know does does their trial form does the performance against the Tigers play into it at all? I think was I think that was that the cherry on top. What do you think? I uh, think the preseason. I think what David all reports preseason the way that he ripped in the leadership skills that he's developed. He's really come out of his shell. He's about that now. He's all in. Mm. And I think what the he played what, well what, on the weekend. Yeah, what he's shown he went to over two hundred meters mm. easily. You know what I mean? First game, whacked out eighty minutes. So that's what you want. Uh, high, de- um, massive involvement in the game, and he just looked like he wanted to run over everyone. Yeah, his talent is ridiculous. You know what I mean? There's no, there's nothing wrong. We speak about there ceilings. Is, there is nothing. No one questions how good a player he is. It's like consistency. That's what we want. Yeah. You know, week in, week out. Your training, your training, your leadership. Obviously, he he's shown. Hit. Yeah, he's so shown, shown. He's shown everything. All the leadership, all the leadership skills that he's got in the preseason. He's about that kind of stuff, and they're going. You know what? Let's reward him. And him even doing that, he could have went on the open market, and got himself around and got over. You know, probably nearly, probably nearly the same money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, for him to do that for the Titans, you know, I think I commend him. Yeah, I'm happy he's staying there, actually. I'm glad. I don't want him to, you know, to, to play in about fucking 10 clubs, you know? Like, so, solidify himself there as one of the best back rolls in the game, which he should be. He should be one of our first back rolls picked for Australia, talent-wise, and Queensland. Like, he didn't play yeah, Origin last year. He right. picked in the Origin. Talent, yeah, his talent means he should be one of the first picked in the, in the Australian team and... Queensland. So hopefully this year he is one of that. He lives up to his. He lives up to his talent. He can just destroy teams by himself. So Queensland back rowers: Kurt Capewell, Jeremiah Nanai, Felice Scafusi. If there's not a world in which he's not competing and, and playing for that, with he's his, he's not in that starting side. He's on yeah. the bench. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's just he has to be in that seventeen. Yeah, you know. So he's realised last year wasn't his best year. And it he's takes capable a man, of takes like, a man. If, if he's if he gets his if he gets his shit together, he's capable. Oh, mate, he's could be one of the fucking yeah. best. So you know he's probably had a bit of a re- uh, reflection in the off season. Bang, need to train harder, need to get fitter, need to be more of a leader. All these little things, and he's done it. So they've rewarded his hard work. They're not worried about his talent at all. No, that's, you know what I mean. That's it's like it's, it's all the other lacked. things that he needs to tick. Yeah, and I think he's done that, and they would have been watching him close as hell up there. And he's delivered. And then he goes into round one. That probably would have solidified it and went, all right, bang, let's sign him. Yes, and he's like, I want to sign him. Let's get it done. Announce it. Let's go. Yeah, well, so I'm happy for him. I'm happy for the Titans too. Yeah, Because you, you got Tino and you got him. Yeah, for sure. Right, yeah, that's a good call. Like you talk about, we're talking about Paddy Carradine and, and Payne Haas before. You set yourself up with Tino and uh, and Dave. You can start planning around it. Yeah, and, one, exactly. and one of those guys is Foz. I text Foz on the weekend, congratulate him. Still really close yeah. with, with Kieran. And um, he's excited about the young boys they got up there. He goes, man, this, he goes, honestly, there's just like so much energy yeah. around this team. It's all about harnessing it. It's yeah, just man. about like making sure that energy is getting put into the right part. So he's obviously going to miss a couple of weeks. I'm sad for him. I like Fafita this week off the back of his combination that he started to build with Dave. But um, I think it's good signs for the Titans. And uh, they, they were good on the weekend against a, a yeah, Tigers team. Have a look at the title. I mean, we did I thought it was going to be a coin flip game. Yeah. Really, so... Yep. They're trending the well right done. way. Yeah. And this is a good sign. All right. Lastly, before we get into preview in round one, story. John Bateman's Tigers arrival leads to Hastings moving on. So it was reported on 360 last night. They were talking about it. The funny thing was, as soon as we got wind that Bateman was going there, I got told he wouldn't play with Jackson Hastings. The Daily Telegraph's Paul Crawley said on NRL 360 last night, Mace. We've heard these sort of sorts of rumours before. 
Paul Kent then added, Bateman and Hastings were teammates at Wigan and it didn't get on there to the point where Hastings left. So, Mace, you know, we've sort of heard these rumblings before about Hastings. I think a lot of people think I'm, I'm a Hastings hater. Mm. I think because the main reason that people think, you know, I've been off Hastings in the past is because of my relationship with Cherry. Everyone knows I'm really close with Daly. Um, there was obviously well publicised and they've come out now. That beef's been squashed. Ches shook uh, Jacko's hand last year. He said they'll sweet after the game. Obviously, he didn't see eye to eye during their time at Manly. Um, and I, to, to be honest, like, it doesn't really bother me, like, what Hastings is doing or whatever. It's just we have to report on it because it's a part of the story and mm. it's... it's not it's personal. It's, it's off, yeah, it's not personal. I, I've actually never... I met Jack, no. Jackson Hastings once, but... He's a repeat offender. It's not yeah. just like people think I'm you know, off him from his time at Manly. I wasn't even at Manly when all this shit went down. I heard about it, heard he's a bit of a lemon, but I also heard he's a lemon from other guys at other clubs as well. So this obviously now has come out. Mace, you've, I don't want to put words in your mouth. You, you, you can speak on it as well, but you know, I've had people send me podcasts and they're like, oh, listen to this, you know, Jacko's, whatever. I said, bro, I honestly don't care enough to be... It's just no. that, one, he's... And this is credit to him. He's a top half in the game right now. He's... He's really? expected to do big things at the Knights. He is expected. A top half in the game right well, now. Well, he's got the capability of being that, Mace, right? Okay. And this is this is like not being, you know, trying to kick a guy when he's down when these yeah. sorts of uh, rumours are getting around. But I will say, there's been rumours from a number of teammates that have played with him. We're a close-knit community, Mace, as you know. Yeah. Probably There's probably been a few people who called me a lemon as well in the past, Mace. It is what it is. But I've heard it a number of times from Hastings, so... This is what this topics are leading to here. And obviously, Bateman wasn't a fan from his time at Wigan. Yeah, well, so obviously the Roosters, Manly. Um, I'm not sure, like, went overseas after Manly, wasn't it? So Manly, yeah, so he went over to... No, so he was at the Roosters first. Roosters, Manly. Manly. Salford. Yeah, but I'm saying he went overseas. And, yeah. like, he tried to fix himself. He sort of went, you know, he's not getting a gig. Most GMs, CEOs, coaches are like, all oh, right, this is too hard basket. This, like, this is fucked. You come from two good systems and they don't want you. So there needs to be a, it's a bit of a character flaw here. That yeah. was a rap on him. Not a very good locker room guy. Mm. Not about that. It sort always of starts shit. well. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, but it's not fucking good for NRL teams to not have a good person in the locker room. It fucking means a lot to get to when you're recruiting people. Mm. So yeah, he's a fucking you know if he's a mediocre player and a shit dude, fuck him. You're not picking him. Do we'll you know see, what I mean? This is why he keeps getting kicks because he has potential but to I'm be saying, a top But half. I'm saying, but I like, I like back then, he's like, yeah, he was all right, but he was, you know, he's not going to be any. You're probably thinking he's not going to be a J, JT or a Joey or a Cooper Cronk or, yeah. uh, you know, play any sort of elite level. So, does he have you're, potential you're, to be you know, a top ten saying, half in the league? No, not no. in my eyes. I'm just saying, if I'm okay. recruit, I think he's a decent. I think he's a decent player. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But I need to see a body of work, like in the NRL. I don't give a fuck what you do in Super League. I do not care. I honestly do not care. There's levels to shit, mate. I had a couple of good games. There the is cats. fucking level, but there's levels to shit. You did your stuff over here, but I'm just saying, like, you can play over there, and then if you dominate here, for give me five years of domination over here, and then yeah. you'll get, then I you'll just get credit. See two, two seasons back yeah, to back. Yeah, yeah, but just yeah, I don't care about like playing about you know one good game every six games. It's you know you need a body of work, and then we can sit back and we can we can see. Okay, well he's about that. You know what I mean? So he went over. He went overseas. Wow, did he win stuff? Did he win Man of Steel? Yep, yep. Did, he, did, all, that, he did all that, did all that shit. Salford. Did no, all that shit. For, and come he back went really well for Wigan too. To went, played for Wigan. Yep. So come back, everyone was thinking, you know what? He's got his shit together. Good club, man. Fixed himself. He said all the right things in the last 18 months. Hasn't said a fucking bad word about anything. He's the best podcast He's a guest bear. ever. Oi, exactly. You know what I mean? So you can play off to the public and everything like that. About you know how you change and you're you know, you're immature and like you 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 weren't this and this and this and this fucking years ago. People are going to believe it. Do you know what I mean? But you we can thought, build a narrative on podcasts. You can, ch- you can you change your narrative. You can control the narrative. Yeah. You know what I mean? You say all the right things on the shows, and this is how these young kids work. They got all these fucking people around them going. You need to fucking change. You're managing it. You need to change the way that people think about you. Everyone thinks you're a fuckwit at clubs. You're not a good clubman, locker room person. You need to change that. Go on all the fucking podcasts in the world. Go to this, do this, say this, say this, say this. You're going to do it to get another crack, aren't you? And then, so obviously he went over there, had a bit of a crack over there, played good. Yep. Played with John Bateman. He was a fucking straight up OG. He knows his shit. He mm. knows people. He's fucking straight to the point. I know people who know him. 
He's yeah, like Bateman's that. an OG. He's like that. Mm. So for fucking him to even come back over and go, I'm not even going to play if he's at the club. A and Hastings, word. coming off Hastings, having a fucking strong year last Again, year. Again, this is reported from 360 as well, so it might not be the gospel, but these we're just saying from what we I don't give a well. shit what 360 yeah. says yeah. because <laughs> I fucking know people that have been at these clubs as well. And yeah. I know people that at the Roosters, at Manly, at all these other clubs, and even at Wigan where he's been. And that's the rap on it. That's it. You can do whatever many fucking podcasts and everything that you want. Bateman to even come over here, him have a great year, great year last year. Change the narrative on everyone. He's doing good. Bang. I'm not playing if he's fucking there. Mm. So what did you do in Wigan? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they flick him and he's in Newcastle now. So he gets a chance. He can say, he said all the right things in Newcastle as well. I don't fucking know the kid. But mm. I'm just saying, this is me knowing about what's going on in the NRL all the fucking time. I know people at Newcastle. I know people everywhere. You know, I haven't. Had, to be fair, I haven't, I, had a bad world, I haven't had a bad world at a Newcastle. I talked to everyone. So far. I haven't heard anything bad, bad yeah. about Newcastle. But every yeah. other club, not good things. Because you know the NRL. It's like a fucking. It's a fraternity. Yeah. Everyone talks. If you fucking. If you're a shit dude, fucking everybody knows it who's ever played the game. How many WhatsApp groups are you in, Hoss? Too many. It's a joke. Too many. It's I've just been joke. removed from a couple as well. So that's a. That's I removed a myself. <laughs> And then I get put back in. <laughs> and I'm the, I dictate, I'm the, I'm the, I dictate I'm the administrator I'm and I remove myself from groups. <laughs> anyway, so, but that's the thing. I mean, like, and I, I don't, I wish the kid all the best and he goes on his merry way and he kills it and reaches I'm his potential. Improvement, reaches his I hope potential. he does. I, I want to believe yeah, in him. I want to believe so in him and him to kill it this year. But I mean, like, whatever he did in Wigan must have pissed John Bateman on, off that much that he has to come over here and they fucking get rid of him just because of John Bateman. Mm. And he had a fucking outstanding year last year, Hastings. And everyone thought that he's turned the other fucking way, everything's all good. That was three, and three, it can't, three years And ago. it can't, look, even if it is like half true, it can't be completely true that just because Bateman's coming over, there's probably a good chance that that's, that was just the Well, maybe the fucking Hastings... Or maybe, let's say, let's say, well, maybe, Hastings, maybe Hastings wanted out of there. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. That but could, maybe not. Be... I'm going to believe. Hey, what, what do we say, OG? Anything in life, there's always three sides to every story. His side, our side, and the truth somewhere in between. Yeah, so 100%. there's probably a little bit, You sometimes you've got to read between the lines on that shit. When you hear people talk, might be talking a little bit of rubbish. I believe he was Just a problem. Wait. I it's... believe he was a Derek at Manly and the Roosters. Yep. He was young and he was silly and he's just cocky, all that sort of shit. Yep, that's and what then I heard. I thought, I thought he... I, Honestly, thought he would have changed his ways over there, and I think he had three years over there. There's part of me that thinks he probably does, bro. With you know, I've seen some of the content that he's put out, some of the podcasts he's on. I think he's got the right. He's just got to follow through on it, bro. This is what I said last year. It's like, again, no of, fucking shade, no shade on Hastings. I don't know the kid, but I'm just saying, like, I know. there's a bit yeah, of shade. Well, yeah. There is a bit of shade from us, but who gives a fuck? Yeah, who, anyway. yeah, who cares? All right, moving on to the game. So if you call it shade or you just call it straight, yeah, straight, that's straight it. talking. We're just, we're just there's, no, there's, there's no shade. I'm not just saying. Yeah. This is exactly what happened. Yep. But there's no... This is not, no, I'm saying... This I'm is not I'm 360. I'm saying I'm putting this a bit of shade. This is not 360 where we can just fucking, <laughs> uh, you know, allegedly talk. This yeah. is fucking... This is what it is. All right, before we get down and break down all the odds for the love games... You Kent, love you, Kenty. And love you, Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, before we get on with the odds we would also like to let you know about the newest feature on the tab app it is the bets friends channel and og we got our own one the levels podcast we channel we have our own channel on the tab we look we had the apology uh on the review show few rough results not our best week but it's round one relax chill We'll build into the season. There's no yeah. need to panic. There's no panic stations. So come on, Bet's Friends. Come on our channel, Levels Podcast. I have a Bet's Friends multi available for this week. So our friends, the traders at the tab, uh, we've asked them for an exclusive offer for our punters on our tab's Bet's Friends channel, which is the Levels Podcast. I've got, I'm going to give a little hint into the, where I'm leaning for the games, AG, just for you, because you'll figure out probably where I'm going with both games. Well, one, you definitely will. I've got South to beat Penrith. Off the back of Trail Mint. I'm not hating that. Into Jeremiah Nanai inside 60 minutes. You can get so go into the channel. There's also um, some good bets that we'll be putting up throughout the week. Mace has been getting involved. I've been getting involved. Reminder for that bet though, there's a max bet of $25. 
And most importantly, always remember to gamble responsibly. So without anything more to touch on there from our friends at Tub, let's get into the games. NRL round one preview. Kicking it off, like I said, I like Souths. Penrith against Souths out at Bluebet Stadium. Uh, head-to-head, $1.52 for Penrith. $2.55 about South Sydney, and the line is at minus five and a half. So, wow. uh, Mace, just your thoughts on the game, not on the odds. Where are you going on this game? Yeah, I'm going to South. Yep. Sim- simply because all the all the shit that um, has been going on, going on over the last three or four years, South has been on the wrong end of some um, some decent, hi- not hidings, but like some sore losses. You know yep. what I mean? Like last year, a couple of years before that. You know, Penrith's been that team that's... Always been, always been there, and, and knocking them out, and or beating them in a grand final. It's fucking, you'd be feeling awful. So, I don't know. South Sydney, even though they are missing two middles, mm. like they did that last year, and I think Cronulla are an amazing team, and they did that without Jai Arrow or Totola. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's a, it's a huge, minutes, it's pretty a much huge 75, 70, minutes, minutes. 70 minutes. So yeah. like, you know, I, I've, it's that's when you know you got a good club yeah. and a good culture when you can just plug and place middles and they just do the exact same job as those as the starters i like shaq mitchell off the bench shaq mitchell was good. david Mawale, we talked about him yeah. him getting off the off the deck from that wade graham hit but i just think i think um, um cody walker is going to have a lot to do with um with them winning yeah. jerome luai on the other hand he's got to step up that kid well mate he's a, he's a gun and i just think latrell mitchell holds the key but hey last year Penrith were the team to knock them out and to fucking put it on them yeah. proper. They've been the guys for the last couple of years, obviously the grand final. Mace, I'm with you on Cody Walker. And I'll be chasing the Grateful Eight again this week, Mace. Every game I'll have my anytime try scorer. I'm on Cody Walker. And you can get him at $3.40. Give me South Sydney as well. Okay. Yeah, but what do you think about sorry, what do you think about Penrith? Do you, what do you think about their mindset? That that culture that they've built out there for the last five years. Yeah. They're not fucking just going to go down no. after one game. Not no. not down. I'm just saying, like, South just can't roll in there and just think they're going to get over them because they've got um, they've missed Appy and they've got no kick out and they played bad. Yeah, this it's is, a blue bet, right? This is setting up. This is fucking Penrith, Penrith, Penrith ambush. Sh- this is setting up for Penrith to do a reverse ambush when they should be favourites at home. I'm not. I'd, I dare say I'm not the only one that thinks South are a chance in this based off the last couple of performances from the Penrith. So. Yeah, Penrith can really turn this into, even though they're favourites at the tab, at the odds have been updated, sorry, um, when, it, when we first placed this, they're now $1.58, South are into 240. Um, this is live, we are filming at 6.30pm on Wednesday, just like to highlight that so as well. So what was that? The show's what's dropping it, tomorrow. This? The odds are now $1.58, so still clear favourites, but um, they have come in a little bit Penrith well. just looked a little bit off, eh? If it wasn't for Sony Luke coming off the bench, they really would have, they really would have looked ordinary. Yeah. And I just think they've got the team and they've got that that culture that can just bounce back and just... They, when's the last time they lost two in a row? Mm. Probably four years ago. They don't do that. So you're, you're leaning back towards Panthers no, no, OG? No, no, no. Stay I, just, I just think South's got too much to play for. I think the plus they five, really and a half, like, oh yeah, five and a half they're, start. They're a little bit wounded at the yeah. moment, yeah. Penrith. So if they're ever going to get them, it's, it's going to be now. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, rolling on to another guys who want to have a big game. Also took an L at home last week. The Parramatta Eels take on the Cronulla Sharks, who lost to South Sydney as well. Uh, head-to-head is $1.53 about the Parramatta Eels, $2.50 about the Cronulla Sharks, still with Nico Hines out, who's been reported to miss another two to three weeks, OG at least. And the line is minus four and a half the Eels. So you get four and a half start for the Sharks. If you like, Mace, who do you think wins this game and why? Yeah, I like the Sharks. You know, I thought they... Um they stuffed up about what about three three opportunities last week against South. They could have easily beat South. Yeah, they for could. Sure. They, had, they was there for the taking. Know, yeah, Mulatalo dropping that ball. A couple other couple of other little options. Braden Trindle played outstanding. I thought Toby Rudolph, their forward pack, was outstanding. They played they played well enough to win that game. So they'll be they'll be a little bit pissed off. Um, Royce Hunt coming back. Uh, who's the boy? Uh, Wade Graham. Our, our man Wade Graham's missing out. Yep. Three the or four suspension. Weeks. Uh, Connor Tracy comes on the bench. McInnes is still there. Um, yeah, I think I think they're they're ready they're ready to roll. They are. I think I think Parramatta will probably I think they'll get beat. I just don't think I, I'm not really sold on Parramatta. I thought if Junior Paulo didn't play, 
how boring that attack would have been. Mm. You know, he's he's doing so many things right near the line. He's doing little bump ups and offloads, and they're hitting him first, and they're coming around the back. He's going back inside. Plus, he's doing everything else. He's like their he's like their lock, like he's ball playing yeah, like right. their lock. Yeah, at the moment too. At the moment, because they don't have much um they don't have much um. Creativity. Hopgood was creativity. good, but he's more of a toilet. Thought, yeah, he's a toilet, mate. He's yeah. going to tackle everything, Matt. Dury played good. I'm not saying they, they played bad. Bryce Cartwright. Oh, apologies on the Dury take, too. He didn't play for Lebanon. I said that in the review. Yeah, he said people, that. People, uh, yeah, you knew straight away. Yeah. You're going to pull me up on that shit, OG. Yeah, was, you got to let me I know. Just, I just trust you. you yeah. I trust you. <laughs> you would have thought, man, I didn't throw that shit out willy-nilly, yeah. but yeah, got that one wrong. You know, apologies Cam, yeah, if you Cam, the I think review. Campbell Gillard, they're going to go, the, the forward packs are going to go at it. Bryce Cartwright, left side back row, you know what I mean? Like, if he can. I'm not sure if I'd put him back row or I'd put... He was solid, I'd I, put thought, him, yeah, I thought he was or good. Or I'd put him at lock. Played big minutes I just too. want him to play both sides of the ruck. He's yeah. got too much talent to just too limit him. Skill. To limit him on one side of the ruck. Bryce yeah. Cartwright just needs to play in the middle. Obviously, they, they might be worried about his fitness if he can get out you know, 65 minutes in the middle or 65, 70, maybe 80 for the middle. But he's got too much skills to be wasted on the left edge because you can game plan for him. They all hunt from the middle, especially with Fitzy's, Fitzy's defensive system there. They're going to come up, hunt... From the inside, they're not going to be falling for his left foot, his dummy, or anything like that. So he's going to either, either hit holes, late offload, or a late offload, all that kind of stuff. So I think you know, Cartwright's their only gem in that four pack in the in the back row. All the mm. others are just workers. Mm. You know, the hot good and um, Dury are just going to be like, yeah, they're just going to keep coming tackles and yeah, run the good keep lines. And they play pre- they play pretty good. You know, yeah. they're, they're still bench, young. They're young yeah, they're in their they're, they you know, their bench. You know, Murchie and. Um, Widow McGreg. Widow McGreg. I think he's he looks fit. Yeah, he's the a big boy. Looks game. fit. No, yeah, it's big... good because that's that's a, that, that was a knock on him. His fitness. So he's willing, you know. So you can still got Macatel there and Momosia. Yeah, young dry kid. Momosia. Yeah, and he played about ten or fifteen off the bench yeah. last week. Come on. They don't really and utilize their bench that well, Paramount. Well, do they, they? it's because they really rely on their starters. I think they're really lacking from last year when they had Oregon Kafusi and Murata Niakora. If, if Murata Niakora yeah. didn't start and Mato come off, therefore come off the bench. Um, that gave him real impact of Oregon Kafusi coming on. Obviously, Makahisi played a little bit as well. But they used to have, they used to have a two man bench. Remember? Yeah. Like they didn't use Jacob Arthur too much, and sometimes, and then even again on the weekend, Makahisi, Makahisi Makatoa. I don't think he wouldn't have played more than ten minutes from memory. Mm. So BA's got a pretty solid rotation with his two guys. I think uh, Penasini and um, Talakai will be going at it. They'll yep. be they'll be trying to exploit that uh, left edge of Cronulla because Talakai was out of place and Campbell Graham pretty much schooled him last year I mean last week um, so look for Parramatta to fucking go right a lot because mm. okay. that's, uh, that's the only place where um, Cronulla look vulnerable yeah well they got done a few times by Lockie yeah. and the there's gang there's there yeah Moyes is so still on Moy- that left edge yeah, so Braden Trimble's on the right yeah so there's, it's a weakness there for, for Cronulla if All you're right. going to point out a weakness it's there all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against you on this one. I'm going Parramatta Eels. Just for all the reasons we sort of said a little bit about, like alluding towards with Penrith, um, I think Mitchie Moses and Dill Brown definitely didn't play their best footy. It's got to, only got to be up this week. They've got to, they've got to be pumped up. Um, you know, How many runs did Dill Brown have? I, 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 I'm not a big stats guy, OG. I'm, I'm just oh, like, just from memory, I don't, I don't reckon he would have had more than five or six runs. That's what I'm saying. I could be wrong, but uh, just from memory... Uh, Loving to run think, double double digit runs every game. Well, OG, you like where I'm going here. So I'm on Dill Brown any time. I think Dill Brown really inserts himself into this He's game. He's their man. And Mitchie gets on the back of it with all the con- contract negotiations. You know, the chat that's going on in the media. He's starting to bite back a bit. He's getting a bit over it. Mm. So therefore, I think he, I think them two really have a, a, a big performance yeah. and uh, Parramatta fly off the back. But they of it, both so. need a big performance, right? Yes, they do. Yep, they'll both off. To their own standards, they wouldn't have been happy with that. Um, they're arguably, you know, when you when you look at Haas and the combination, you got the Penrith gang. Um, Souths are starting to, you know, if Lockie can keep yeah. trending like he's doing, but it's a top three, it's a top five combination. And obviously you got Melbourne, you know, the Melbourne boys in Munster and uh, and and Romy. So um, yeah, they'll be hungry for this game, I think. And I think Parramatta, like we said in the clip, if you watch yeah. some of the clips on there, I'm not a Parramatta hater. I just play, it, I just call it yeah. the way I see it. I like Parramatta in this one. I think they bounce yeah. back. I like Sharks now. I think this is the game of the round, AG. Shit, like there's, if, there's two crackers in front right, of that. Penrith, Penrith South, Parramatta, Cronulla, and I think this one could be even better. Yeah. The Queensland Derby. Little bro against big bro. Who's the big bro at the moment? Brisbane Broncos at home to the North Queensland Cowboys. Brisbane are $1.74 favourites, and the Cowboys are 
10 underdogs Fuck. with our friends at the tab. The line is only one and, a, one and a half, so the tab also think it's going to be a coin flip. OG, who wins and why? Oh, this is a hard one, man. I love North Queensland, but I just I think the Broncos will get it. Mm. I just think like they're playing at home, right? Yep, Suncorp, at Suncorp. You're talking 40 plus thousand. It'll be they're packed. going to turn up. They will turn up. This game deserves capacity. I've played in this derby before. It's fucking intense. And it's only round two. I, like, I mean, oh, fuck. If North Queensland put 70 minutes of what they did last week. I don't mm. think many people touch them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They would have been happy with the win just to get away. And I just think that confidence that they bring from, um, from what they did down at Penrith, yep. the Broncos are going to be so hard to beat. Pain up. They've all got one more game underneath them. Reese Walsh comes are, in. Are they capable? Cobo of, comes on the, on, onto the wing with OG, Oates. Are they capable of getting too, uh, too, too far in front of themselves? No. Uh, will I they just, be feeling them too I just, th- I just think that, the, that okay. last, last year, and what, <clears> what happened last year, they started off all right and they end up playing pretty good and consistent all year and they're just falling off a fucking cliff. Yeah. I think this will be one of those games where they're like, you know what, boys, let's just fucking go 80-minute effort. Playing against the Cowboys, is that rivalry, all that kind of shit, you know what I mean? Like, they just, they look all right. The only knock I've got on them is, like, the weakness in the forward pack. It's probably Billy Walters. That's it. That's it. He's just not as good as Reese Robson. You know what I mean? You've got Jordan McLean and Cotter Hess, Hess, Nanai, Tal Malolo. Then you've got Payne Haas, Jensen, uh, Kate Wall, Ricky and Carrigan. It's so even. It is so even. I just think Reese Robson's a better nine than Billy Walters because Billy Walters is not a natural nine. The more I, I actually don't mind Billy Walters. Eh? I think I don't, I don't I, mind I, him. I'm just, yeah. I'm just comparing him. Yeah, I'm just I know, comparing I him. He, Reese Robinson. Oh, I'm with you. Reese Robinson's got him covered in terms of like, like a fucking head. truck. Yeah, he's a weapon. He's, he's going to be like, he's, he's going to be in legit contention. I think he was already thereabouts last year in the squad for New South Wales. He was in the squad, putting pressure on Cookie and Uppy. I think he was a part of the squad with both of them in it. So, um, I got high expectations for Reese Robson. You're right. When I look at this team on paper, I think maybe across the board, Brisbane have got more talent. Yeah. I like the cohesiveness of the Cowboys. Even though they sort of let an 18-0 lead slip, maybe 18 or 18-6, 18-0, and Canberra Raiders got back into it. They have to win in, with a field goal from Chatty Townsend. I just like the cohesiveness of the oh, Cowboys. I loved it. I think, you know, we're both high on them for the season. So, And if you're rolling with us, I'm going to roll with the North Queensland Cowboys. And I'm going to go Jeremiah Nanai, $3.10. It's in our Bets Friends channel as well, so go in there, have a look at it. I'll be updating the anytime try scorers that I absolutely love all round, so come and get on board. Jeremiah and I part of my grateful eight for yeah. this round. Because he had a quiet game last week. He did. He probably was quiet game for a while. He didn't he score did. a try, he didn't do anything. He probably had, yeah, I think he had only had four, to, four or six hit-ups. He scored twice against and Broncos. And he's the only one year. not to get 100 metres in that forward pack, so yeah. I think he's going to he's gonna try and... I'm fuck, I don't know who I'm going to pick, Abe. I'm very confused. You start on I'll the just start with the Broncos because you're going to go the Cowboys. Oh, That's it. All right, I'm going Cowboys. You go All right. Broncos. All right, on to the next game. First game on Super Saturday. The Sydney Roosters, very disappointing against the Redcliffe Dolphins on the weekend. They take on the Wires, who've been pretty impressive, going, rolling all the way back from their trial form. The Roosters are favourite, though. At Allianz, $1.27. The Warriors, $3.80. And the line... You can get a 12 and a half start about the Warriors, which seems to have been pumped in on the tab at $1.85 and therefore pushing the line out, $1.95 minus 12 and a half about the Roosters. Mace, mm. how do you feel about that? Jeez, I'm not, I'm not that confident in the Roosters. Yeah, if you just had a look at this forward pack, Lindsay Collins, Brandon Smith, Fletcher Baker, Egan Butcher, Nat Butcher and Victor Radley. They're all goers. You know what I mean? They, they all have Radley's a Radley's out though, isn't he? I'm not sure. They named him. Yeah, Radley. Is Radley out? Radley... Radley could be out with if the Radley's hatred. out I'm going to back the Warriors yeah Sam Walker Kiri Paulo Manu Suli Tupo Tedesco and I, I, th- I think their back line's outstanding but they don't go they don't go as far as that forward pack takes them mm, yeah, and I mean I think oh, I mean I don't, I don't know I think the Warriors the, the Warriors played decent last week you know the Newcastle weren't that good yeah you know but I think Went world beaters, were they? Fanuel Blake and Barnett, Jackson but did, Ford, Newell but did, Corey, mate, Torhu Harris. Did Redcliffe have to be world beaters to beat the Roosters? Not really. They just deed up hard, man, and yeah. they fucking and I just got think a couple it just of scrappy little you, know, like, you know, the Warriors... You know, this goes back to 2002 with the, with the um, 
the grand final. You know, anyone who's played in the grand final against each other, you just build that hatred towards mm. each other forever. So that's a, one of these games. I'm playing for the war, uh, the Roosters. You go against the Warriors, it's always a hard game. I just think the Warriors got a, they've got a decent enough team to come over here and so do beat, I. and and to cause an upset. This they'll they'll say it's an upset, but you got so many like you know Fletcher Baker, Lindsay Collins, two Butcher brothers and and Radley. If I'm, he plays, I'm gonna just guess. Look, it's Wednesday, seven p.m. Here, this is obviously dropping tomorrow, Thursday, 5 p.m. I'm going to guess, just because of what the Roosters' history, that, that Victor Radley doesn't play based off that HIA. I don't want to play him. I, I, don't, I play. don't want him to play, bro. The way he's wobbling in that contact when he come off against Redcliffe, I'm going to say he doesn't play. Potentially, you get a Turpin that goes in the starting lineup. Maybe Chase, maybe Chase starts or... They've got options, man. Drew, yeah, Drew I know. I, wor- I worry about Victor Radley, man. He's one of the, the best hitters and one of the best players in the game. But, like, y- you can't go... 120 percent into he's too much ev- he's into, too much of a dog no, for his into own life. every tackle for his own good yeah i love him i love the way he plays but i just care about his longevity such a good player great for the club great for the game love seeing him play but i don't want to see his, his um you know his uh career, his career, career just, just come into like yeah. you know like you know have a, well, look, when at, have a look at Coop, have a look at uh, you know some of his mates that he's won premierships with mm. boy quarter and nathan friend 28 years old boy, Cordner. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like... Just he had so much more because he was going to achieve. Yeah, I just, I, just, I just don't want that to happen. Yeah. And, and Either I do I. The, I Roos, think the, the Roosters, Roosters are at the forefront from, for all this uh, um, player welfare. And yeah. I hope to God that they're taking care of this kid. I know they are, but that you, sometimes you need to step in front of um, some players. Yeah. Because we just don't give a fuck when we're playing. We just want to play. We want to rip him for your team. Rip him for the club, and he's a proud Roosters man. They all love him. He's just highly respected throughout the game. But Victor, just just look after your health, mate. Yeah, yeah, great, uh, great chat there, OG. Uh, Joey Manu will be a big in for the Roosters. I think still think the Roosters win, but I'll take mm. the start plus twelve and a half at the tab. And for my anytime try scorer, just because I thought the flanks were a little bit uh, vulnerable on the weekend. Obviously, Jermaine Asako went over a couple on that right edge. Mm. I thought Ed- Edward cossey has been pretty uh, impressive, and he's starting to. Um, uh, really find his way in the NRL. Like he's he's still got the odd error in him, and he and he obviously you go back to that Anzac Day game last year with a, with a, uh, with the Storm peppered him. But every time I see Edward Cossey uh, play, I'm, I'm even more impressed. So two dollars fifty about Edward Cossey to score on the right side for the Warriors. Uh, I'll take that at two dollars fifty. Mm. Moving on to the next game, the team that beat the Sydney Roosters last week, the Redcliffe Dolphins, are hosting. The Canberra Raiders, so the Canberra Raiders are staying up in Queensland for the first two games. Sticks wasn't happy. It's not bad. Sticks happy wasn't happy with the draw of getting the Cowboys, so I dare say he wouldn't be happy that he's staying up in Redcliffe for the game too as well for the Canberra Raiders travelling in the first two rounds. The Dolphins are $2.45 underdogs at home. Right. Therefore, the Canberra Raiders are favourites at $1.50 with our friends and our partners at the tab. The line is plus four and a half, so if you want a four and a half start, on the Raiders, you get a dollar ninety about that, and minus four and a half about the Dolphins. What do you think? Can Wayne do it again? Back yeah, to back. Yeah, Wayne can Mace? do it again easily. I think um, what they showed was a lot of grit, and just like they, I don't, like what Kafusi did, it just showed and pitif- epitified, epit- epitomized, epitomized, epitomized what epitomized. they stand for. You know what I mean? Like they don't have massive big household names, you know what I mean? But they've got some proper vets in their game and they fucking rip in as hard as they can. They just got first graders, they? You got proper first graders. A couple graders. OGs that, yeah, that they rep do. plays you before. You know what I mean? They've, like... got, they've, they've got some just guys who know how to handle first grade easily. And they, they proved that last week. They weren't rattled at all from like how the Roosters come out. Their back line's quick. Their forwards are aggressive. They've, you know, like just say with uh, O'Sullivan and Katol, young yeah. back rowers, they defend inside... Kafusi and Bromwich. I mean, just outside those guys. They're getting protected massively. Mm. It's like Darren Lockyer when you got Tony Carroll outside. Tunza. Big Tunza. Fuck that. I'm not running at Tunza. I'll go to the other <laughs> oh, side. Tunza was a problem, mate. Fuck, he was a problem, Tunza. I had to go, <laughs> get it, Lockyer. Get it, Lockyer, mate. all going, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ. Drop me under. Um, Tom Gilbert, great defender as well. Marshall yep. King, outstanding. Bromwich, Wallace, Kafusi, the other Bromwich. Jeremy Marshall King. Both, both outstanding. Marshall King was unreal. Even like Mark Nichols, Le, Lim, Lemuelu. Lemueli? Yeah, Killed it. From the Cowboys. Absolute nice. animal that try yeah. he scored. I loved everything he did. He's got, um, he's got some game about him, Mark hey, Lemueli. Mark Nichols, try again. He, he did Apologies his job. Apologies if we're pronouncing that wrong. Yeah, it's a bit he of did a tongue his job. Twister. 
You know, I think, um, you know, Canberra, they didn't start good, obviously, you know, um, and... But they showed some the, dog. Yeah, they got some dog in them. Mm. I just think this will be a, this will be a pretty tough game. You got some yeah. old, you got it's some proper, you got some proper vets in this game. It's very they're going to go pick. at each other in that forward pack, and I just think they're just a little bit more, a little bit more class in the back line. You know, I think the Hammer played unbelievable. Isaka yep. played great. Branko Lee and Aiken, great defensive players. Yep. Tessie Newell's outstanding coming out of yardage. Good carries. And they're back. Oi, the seven and six. Get to your kicks, make your tackles, lead the boys around, show some energy. That's all Wayne would have said to him. And that's exactly what they're going to do. He he installs that much just confidence into everybody, let alone the seven and six. Everyone would galvanise around him, and that's what they did on the weekend. No one fuck was so Sullivan and Katara on the weekend, did they? Not aggressively, nothing. Yeah, Felice didn't allow it. No. Kenny didn't allow it. And I just think I think they'll go off this. They'll just keep the momentum happening. I agree. I think the Dolphins are dogs, but I also think they're going to come up against some dogs that have been doing it for a minute together, even yeah. though those players have been doing I it think, sorry, different I think they miss Papa Lee, man. Big Papa. Yeah, so he leads like, that shit. But Tarps has taken his game to a Yeah, I know that, but Tarps though. needs Papa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pups is yeah. Pups is still an elite front rower. Even though he doesn't play the massive minutes Second like he used phase, to play. Good hitter, mate. You don't fucking man. run straight at that kid. I like, that I like kid, that fucking monster. Yeah, he's big pups. Um yeah, but I think Joseph Tupton is doing a good job. He's a proper leader of that Can't team. Can't do it now. by himself, but he's well. Pup, Pups has taught him. Pups has taught him. He's going to have to yeah, because I, I, I got the Raiders in this one. OG. He, need, he needs. He needs the other prop to to do his work. Yeah, and you know, you know where they get help because they've got dogs in the in in the backs as well. Mm. Jackie White and he plays like an extra forward. Yeah. Tom Starling, only a small fella, plays like a dog. He. Tom Starling thinks he's 150 kilos. Yeah, he right. He's got that proper yeah. small man syndrome where he thinks he can beat everyone. And, and that's uh, that's contagious, bro. That runs yeah. off in the team. I like, I like Canberra. I just think, you know... I like Horsburgh too. I think he's improving. He's, he's ascending as a player. They're at home I again. Also, sorry, sorry, sorry. How many reckon they're going to get Suncorp? Is it at Suncorp again, is it? Let me have a look. I, I think... I think no, I think, I, th- I think they're is at, it Red at Redcliffe. Red yeah, I think they're at the new... The, the back Do they have Redcliffe. a stadium? Yeah. Let me have a look. Coming up here... It is at KO Stadium at Redcliffe, yeah. Right. Um, Interesting. I'm, yeah, I'm going Raiders. I think Raiders, this is going to be a dogfight, a proper dogfight. I don't think it's going to be high scoring. Uh, maybe if you're going to take the points, lean towards the Dolphins, plus four and a half. But give me the Raiders. And therefore, my anytime try score of chasing the great for eight, I'm on Matthew Timokor. Uh, I just think he's a little nugget. Maybe he dives over, gets a little bit of early ball, some nice shape. Ducks underneath, pops over for a try. So give me Matthew Timacore. Two dollars eighty at the tab. All right, next game is that is not right. Oh, it's Manly. I, I thought it was Manly. Dogs. I thought it was Manly yeah. and Bulldogs. Uh, it's Melbourne and the Bulldogs. Melbourne Storm at home to the Bulldogs without the Prez Cam Munster. Head to head, the Melbourne Storm are obviously favourites at dollar thirty six. Your dogs, Mace, are three dollars at twenty, and the line is plus seven and a half. Uh, for your dog, so you get a dollar ninety-five about that. There's been a bit of money on the storm to cover that minus seven and a half, even without Munster. I'm not so sure, Mace. How are the boys feeling? You got around him at training this week. Yep. Um, it's just that game. That you big just game, want. big yeah. game. Go down to Melbourne, get the job done, set yeah. yourself up nicely. Well, boys got it? a good record against Melbourne traditionally. Um, you know, our boys just—it's it was round one. That's not that's not what we're about. It's not what we stand for. It's not our it's not our standards and what we want to play like and the beauty about rugby league is it's always next week. Mm. You know, like it's round one, there's always next week. And After they get, those they games, get, you can't wait get, for next yeah, week. Yeah, they get to prove themselves again. They get the chance to prove themselves again and they're just chomping it to bits. Good energy all week. They've done everything that we've asked them to do. Um, you can't you can't do any more. You just got to, as I said, it's a, it's a performance-based life that we live in, isn't it? Especially sure. with the NRL, and it's just like we, I actually don't think you were that far off, bro. No, I think we I said weren't. It in we the we went through the video. Well. We watched the whole first half. Yeah, and it took like an hour and a half. We dissected it. The whole the whole the whole team did. It's real positive stuff. To, it's positive stuff to come out of it because probably when you're out there, and it's like twelve six, you feel like it's fucking thirty six six because of the amount of ball that they had. But yeah. you know, like we everyone agreed, like you know, we we're well and truly in that game the whole time until probably the last. 20 minutes. The sin binning didn't help. Yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot of factors there. There's a lot of excuses, but we're not making excuses. We just want to get in there, get the fucking week done, get down and just tear into Melbourne. Yeah, awesome. I'm on you, bro. I'm on the Bulldogs yeah. and not just because you're sitting across from me. I think the Bulldogs can pull it off. I thought, yeah, yep. Melbourne were courageous. 
Um, especially Munster. I think he leaves a big gap that I'm just like yeah. not too sure who fills it, whether it's Tyron Wish it or maybe we see some of the young kid, Jonah Pezzett, who's in the extended squad, or they mix and match a little bit with some other options. Um, I just I just think the Bulldogs can sneak one here. I think they go down, um, be Melbourne teams are always going to be desperate, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, Melbourne's I, Melbourne, I, man. I, you know I, you're going to get it. I almost feel a little bit... It's one of those things, again, you feel a little bit sick when you're tipping against Melbourne, especially down in Melbourne. Yeah. But um, I think the Fox is going to be in for a big game in this one. I think the left edge off the back yeah. of a very underwhelming performance. Matty Burton yeah. was off. Kicks was off. Fox was off. I think that left edge pumps up this week. Yeah, and, uh, you're never going to see those guys. They're, they're no. world-class players, mate. They don't play two they games had, like had, that. Yeah, they don't play two, two games like that. They're world-class players. No one's even worried about that. You know, they're going to fix their games. They're going to make a few adjustments, get down there, get the business done. All right, I'm on the Bulldogs. $3.20. I'll take the line. That's a fair, plus, fair. I'll, I'll take the line plus seven and a half. And I also like the Fox. Anytime. Might even have a little piece on the Fox to score first. How about that? Ooh, nice. All right, rolling on to Sunday. And these games aren't the greatest. The West yeah. Tigers at home to the Newcastle. Both yet to get a win after round one performances. The Tigers are seventy favourites. They're at home. I'm not too sure if it's a wait one sec. At Campbelltown or Leichhardt. I'll come back out. Either way, the Knights <laughs> two who cares. The Knights are two dollars fifteen. The line is plus two and a half for the It'll Knights. Be at Campbelltown, at I reckon. Yeah, I dare say it would be a Campbelltown. Uh, it'd be not. I mean, it'd be like TNT. I, I don't mind that. I think. I mean, I think they're going to be hard to beat. I don't. I don't hate Tigers. I don't think they're the Tigers this week? They're a better team than Newcastle. They've showed it. You know, they show glimpses of it. You know, they just need to stick to the plan. Trial form was pretty good. Trial form. Yeah, they have got some big bodies there. They um, a couple of their their middles are a little bit off. I don't know why you. I, I mean, I think Appy was under injury cloud. That's why they started him off the bench. Yeah. I know that. Um, yeah, Big Clem went well. Big Papaliti went well. Sean Bloor, Offing Alway. They just... They, they just didn't capitalise on their opportunities. They mate. Yeah. They I probably think, won think, every step. Exactly. Stat. In their head, they probably thought it was like fucking 18 nil in the first 10 minutes. It yeah. was 2 nil. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they didn't capitalise. And I think if Appy plays in that first 15 minutes, I reckon they come, they come away with two tries. Yeah, I'm with you. you I, know, think I, just, I think I they at least think, get I think, one. You know, like if, if you give him that much good ball... He's going to hit one of those middles, or he's going to make the right decision. He's going to he's going to get a try for it, or, or score himself, you yeah. know, something like that. So starting him off the bench, I hear that it was because of injury, because you're not doing that if he's if that's a full fully fit Appy Carousel. Yeah, no, you've just named him skipper. You probably you know you ideally stupid. wanted to start. So yeah, there must have been an injury cloud. I don't know he missed the trials. He didn't play any of the trials. So um, the reports are he's carrying a bit of a niggly. Uh, and we'll see how but much like, game if you're time carrying, he gets if this you're week. But if you're carrying a niggling injury, like what's the point of start? What, what, what do you mean? Like, what's what's going to happen if you start off the bench? Well, maybe maybe show they shouldn't have just played him and saved it a week, eh? Yeah, yeah. Like you know what I mean? Or do they just like show him out there because he's our he's our captain? Probably. And everything? Like, like, if that, he's got that, a that come into if it. If he's got a niggle, just don't play him. Hmm. Play him round two. I just don't yeah. understand. You just wouldn't risk a, per, a player like that. Other or it might have been Tim Sheen's tactic. I don't know. Hmm. The Could fucking be. dumb tactic if it was. All right, so you're on the Tigers, OG? Yeah, I like the Tigers. I think I, th- I think they'll they'll bounce back, and I just oh. think that I, I just don't think the Knights have that much in them, to I'm, be honest. I'm going to go. On, I'm going to go on the Knights because of this. I think, like I said uh, in the review uh, for round one, I thought the Knights were just starting to find their way. In particular, KP Kalen was starting to get himself in the game. He got held up once and attacked the line on another occasion where I just don't think he really realised how close he was to the line. Therefore, I'm targeting him for my anytime try score for the Grateful Eight. Yeah. And you get $4 about KP scoring against the Tigers. Ooh. And I think he was really starting to find his way into the game. There's a lot of question marks in and around, obviously, the, the HIA from mm. last weekend and whether that determined games. I think this is a great opportunity for the Newcastle Knights to come out and, and almost say, look, we were building into the game. We yeah. sort of got... Un- they were harshly uh, done by with the KP yeah. ruling. And I think they maybe bounced back in this I game. But Sunday, with no uh, confidence. Sunday Leichhardt. With no confidence. Sunday Leichhardt, four o'clock game. They love that shit. They always play some really good football. Dane Gagai's back as well. One of the True. best defensive centres in the game. So he's yeah. going to really nullify whoever, he, whoever, whoever he's playing against will probably make 20 metres. All right, who would he be marking up on? His right side, left side, center Naden. for them is Naden. Naden. 
That'd be good. Nate had a good game. Nate played well. Tommy Talao looked a little bit busted by the end of the game. Bradman yeah, Best. They still got a up. good team, man. The Knights team is to- still good. Tommy Talao's played first grade in about 18 months because he's fucking injured. Yeah, he's done his team. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sold on the Tigers. I don't know why the fuck I did that. Maybe because of you, TNT. Fuck yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stick with the Tigers. Stick with Tigers? All right, I'm on the Knights for, uh, for people playing at home. All right, the last game of the round is the St. George Illawarra Dragons. We had the bye last week, rolling against the Gold Coast Titans. And despite not having Kieran Foran, the Tab has still got them at $1.80 favourites. To name him too. Against the Dragons at home. Uh, I believe it's at Cogra. They are $2 underdogs at home at Cogra. The line is plus one and a half, which there's been a little bit of money for the Dragons at $1.85. And obviously the line minus one and a half about the Titans. Can Titans go back to back away games to start their season? Yeah, Jim? they can. I mean, I'll be more... Yeah, more sold on it if Foreman was playing. Mm. But I just think um, their forward pack's a bunch of monsters, man. Like Joel have played outstanding. Farsal Marley, Fafita, Stimson, Isaac Liu played out. I think he played great last week. That was the, that was the play that they expected when they bought him last yes. year. Yes. So he's found his feet this year. I think he'll have an outstanding year. I think he's got his New Zealand jersey back. Their back line's pretty sharp, man. I think that's what gave him confidence, bro. He, got the, he got the New Zealand jersey at the end of the year and played yeah. pretty well in the quarter. Yeah, he cup, did. I thought and he bought that back. He bought that back. So, it gave him so AJ confidence. Brimson was outstanding last week. Yeah. He looks stacked. He's he in good nick, jacked. Eh? He's in good nick, looks eh? good. He looks good. He knows it too. He scored that try. He's did a bit of a flex. Flexing I think on him. Uh, Aaron Shoppy, Shoppy, the ex-Bulldog. Yeah, his defence was his solid. His defence was amazing. Philip Sammy. So he, I think he'll be going against uh, Moses Suley, who's a beast. Zach Lomax is an animal. So they're going to have some really good battles in the back line. I want to see um, Jojo Fafita in the clear. Yeah. And that Kane Peri- Khan Pereira. 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 Alo Fiana. Apologies for being wrong. Getting it wrong. Khan Pereira. Um, yeah, they've got some real burners, man. They've got a real young ascending outside back. Tanner Boyd needs to take hold. He needs to grab it this game. Like, yeah. I think Sexton's going to play. You know what I mean? Sexton, you think Sexton will play? Is that yeah. what you think the play Se- will be? I mean, or unless you move AJ to 5'8 and you put Campbell, yeah, you to, can... Campbell to fullback. Mm, that'll be maybe, that, maybe, that, maybe that's a little bit better. Because you know, you know, I don't think you're going to have Sexton and Boyd. Probably right. the worst halves in the game. I'm telling you, there's a young kid called Kino Kinney, number 21 jersey in the reserves. Mm. Massive reps on him coming out of Gold Coast. What do you reckon? Would you do that? Player. Would you put AJ at six and put um, Campbell mm. at one or put Campbell at six? Well, no, nah, I would go Sexton personally. I'd give Sexton. This is a the seven? Great, yeah, seven and six with uh, where do you play with Tanner Boyd? Just give Sexton the opportunity now. He's seen Kieran Foran do his thing in the preseason. There were big raps on him 12 months ago. I, th- I thought he was going to become a real player. Let's give him another chance. Team's got a bit of confidence after a round one win. Plug and play him in there. Therefore, I don't want to move Brimmer away from that fullback role. Yeah. And I thought I mean, Jaden Campbell brought some real energy coming off the bench in a little splurt. I just felt like those two were popping up all so over just, the place. So just plug and play some Sexton, huh? Yep. I'm changing, I'm changing right. Sexton in and see. Like, it's almost like a... Not a. Do you put Sex in at seven? Not a last chance. And put I, Boyd at at five eight on that left side, so as a combination with Fafita, something like that. Potentially, Maybe. yeah. Because I don't Sexton know. Because I don't think I don't think he's he's not a traditional um, or Tanner Boyd's not a natural seven. Yeah, yeah. I think I, he's a nine six sort of. I don't know. Yeah, he's a bit of a hybrid. Yeah. Um, what about the Dragons, OG? They didn't play last week. This is the first time we've seen since the infamous scuffle where word got out. Uh, it could be a big prove it game for the Who Dragons, knows, bro. Man. This, could, this I could, don't know what I'm going to see with the Dragons. Bro, the Dragons this year. are so hard to read. I mean, I, hopefully, just for the you know, I know what it's like being in, in some teams. That, you know, you struggle a little bit. You just got to fucking get out there and just fucking rip in as hard as you can, just to shut everyone up, their fans and everything like that, and all the all the people on social media, all that kind of stuff. You just want to shut everyone up, otherwise, because if you go out there and perform really shit, everyone just has another excuse just to pile it on you. Mm. You know what I mean? So they've got some balls here, St. George. You know, they've got some grown ass men in this team. So you'd like to see you'd like to see him come out and perform. You know, I mean, but you know, Jack Bird and Jane Sewer, Ben Murdoch, Masilla. Well, ben Hunt's the best player Mo in the Zemba. field. That's not a bad pack, man. On Mo paper. Mo Zembai, Laurie, Murdoch, Masilla, Sewer, and Bird. That's fucking decent, man. I don't doubt the talent on the Dragons. I just I, doubt I the fucking locker room. It doesn't seem like a good locker room, bro. No, like, it doesn't. Like there's report, obviously the push and shove, but it's more the report that come out of it. Damn. They didn't turn up to fucking Prezo last year. Yep. It's not like they're not a team that seems connected because when you look at it, right, bro, like Tyrone, Tyrone, let's start all the way from the top. Tyrone Slane, I think he's 
he can really become a player for mm. just like show some confidence in him. I think that can unlock him. Yeah. Fainga and uh, Ravaloa, Zach Lomax and Sully, they're capable of being one of the better pairings in the competition, yep. bro. And then you've got Jaden Sullivan, same thing. He's a conf- needs to get confidence from Hook. Mm. Benny Hunt, he's the best player on the field, mm. hands down. Him and, T- him, him and Tino, the two skippers. Um, in, the, in the Ford pack, it's more of a tradesman-like Ford pack. Blake Laurie, Frank, Frankie Molo, Benny Murdoch, Masilla comes over from the Warriors. But Jackie Bird, man, like I'm still, I'm a massive fan of Jackie Bird. Same. So, they definitely, it wouldn't surprise me, bro. Like, it, this game wouldn't surprise me if a team won by 20, 24. I think the bench might change it too. Look, you got Campbell, Jane Campbell, Fodawaka, Aaron Clark, Sam McIntyre. It's a decent bench. Molo, Couchman, Musgrove. Yeah, Little. give me the Titans bench for sure. Yeah, the Titans bench. And I think, you know, if you plug and place, Fodawaka comes on for, um, for Joel. If he comes, he plays big minutes, got left arm carry, left arm offload, left foot. Got some really good skills. Good combination with Isaac Liu. Joe Stimson's decent. He was at the Dogs last year. Yep. Good, good kid. He's solid. Yeah, just fucking makes 100 tackles. Um, Tradesman-like mm. performances every week. Yeah. Aaron Clark. You just know what you're going to get from guys like yeah, that. Yeah, like you? Aaron Clark comes on. He makes a difference. I don't think... Like Jacob Little, he was that little guy that was from the Tigers, right? Yep. Him yeah. and Musgrove come over from the Tigers together. Barely a first grader, so... Anyway. Who are you leaning to? I'm going Titans. Titans, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah, both because on Titans. Because it's a 17-man game this time. Yeah. These games. Yeah, I'm with you. And my any time try scorer for that game is the one and only David Fafita. He's just signed on for another couple of years. I like him for any time try scorer yeah. to round well, out see him cause some my havoc, great weight. Real havoc. Early. I can see him mm. getting over. I loved it even more when Fozzie was there. Yeah. I'm spewing that Fozzie's out for the next couple of weeks. But give me David Fafita, $2.80 any time jam. Mm. And that wraps up round two preview, OG. Mm, uh, right. Anything else that we need to address before we move on? No, nah, That's it. Remember to jump on our Bets Friends channel, channel on the Levels podcast on the Tab app. And uh, looking forward to round two, brother. Heading down to Melbourne? I am. I'll be yep. down there. Awesome. All right. Dogs. I like the dogs in that one. Let's go. <laughs>